Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink, I have in sample form, and I believe this is my first uh, review for this brand. It's uh, Toucan. Uh, they're an Australian brand, and I rem the only people I remember selling this are Anderson Pens. Um, if that is no longer true after the taping of this video in the first week of February 2016, please leave a note in the comments down below. Uh, this is their Royal Blue. It is, I think, their darkest blue, which, uh, if you look at this, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't, we'll get into that. Uh, so the two pens I used were this Parker Vector with a fine nib, and actually vectors are generally fairly dry writing, and this one generally is. And also this Lamy Safari with a... Ooh, why is everything all... Anyways, it's a 1.1 nib. So Now, there is something about this ink that makes it a little unique to the point where I don't have anything even remotely like this. Um, not, not really. Uh, if you'll see here, there's a lot of there's a lot of shading, but it's actually because the ink is is fairly thin, and I don't know if you'll notice it, but there's almost like this hint of purple in a few spots. But yeah, so there's two can royal blue. Here's Diamond's Mediterranean, which is much darker, and uh, Pilot's Eroshizuku Kanpeki, which is also darker, but also shades a lot and also has some like hints of just tiny hints of purple where it's absolutely at its darkest, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I just sort of wanted to see what it could stand up to, so here's a swab, and as you can see, water absolutely obliterated it. So did a one-third bleach solution, but interestingly, the ammonia pen flush didn't do much, um, so that was kind of odd. The de denatured alcohol did absolutely nothing. Hydrogen peroxide uh, actually cleared it up pretty good, but yeah, so. Let's check out the chromatography because the chromatography is actually rather interesting. Okay, here's how you're supposed to do it. And, okay, the camera's turning it neon, but um, let me see if I can fix that. Does that help? Ish? No, it doesn't? Okay. That's cool. Uh, just imagine like a very light sky blue. Oh wow, that's really neon. I'll try and fix it in post, but I've learned that that in particular is quite hard. But uh, yeah, I don't know if this will... Oh, there, it's less neon. But um, yeah, it's a very light sky blue, and then you see these like hints of purple, and then you can kind of see where the initial drop was put, because that's where the purple starts, but it's very thin, right? Yeah, so here I let it dry. And as you'll see, that spot just got a little bit darker, but there's also this weird blue halo around it. And there's more emptiness right here. So, yeah. I have my issues with this ink. Okay, top down to density, Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. I'm gonna try and hold this still. Can you see what I'm talking about? It, um,. It's very, it's very thin. It feels undersaturated. Uh, I remember somebody talking about this ink and saying that because these inks are designed to be mixed, there's a whole line of inks, I think there's like 12 or something, uh, that because you would want to mix them, you would want them to be under, undersaturated, less saturated. I actually disagree. Um, I think you would want them to be more saturated because you can dilute them, but you can't add more to them. You know, it's... <laughs> It's like when you're adding salt to food. You can always add more salt, but once it's in there, you can't take it out. So the fact that this is their darkest blue and it's this undersaturated. I mean, look, this is the darkest area where I laid it on really thick, and you can still see every single line, even the tiny ones on this Sayers paper. So yeah, and and it's also just like this weird thin watery blue. It, it's not it's not pleasant and. Uh, yeah, anyways, the fine vector took 8 seconds to dry, the 1.1 stub took 12, so there's that. I mean, it, it dries fairly quickly, considering this is very dense paper. And it's very well behaved in that there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. But, um, yeah, there is utterly no water resistance. 
like that is completely gone. <laughs> you can barely tell there was ever anything there. But it does do this thing where it will dry on the nib on both pens. So like here, you see how dark it is right here compared to down here? And yeah, we'll see that again. But Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Where again, it's it's very thin. It's a, it's a very thin ink. Uh, it's watery. I mean, this is a dot pad. And again, you can see the dot right there in the thickest areas of this ink. It's, uh, yeah, so, I mean, if you really love shading, you'll probably really enjoy this ink because a lot of times really watery inks give a great degree of shading, which you can see all throughout. But um, to me, there, there's shading and then there's like flattering shading. This sort of just highlights how undersaturated the ink is for me. But, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to say, the flow is at about 5.5 out of 10. Um, it just goes, but it isn't super free-flowing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the fine took 8 seconds to dry. The 1.1 took 14, which is kind of weird. Uh, usually things dry on Rodeo just a touch faster than Clairefontaine. But, yeah, see, this is what I mean by it dries on the nib and gets darker. You see how there it's dark and then gets lighter, and then there gets dark and gets lighter. So that's something to be aware of. But again, very well behaved. No bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good in that regard. And it really washed away. The uh, the spots for the 1.1 stub remained, but that's that's about it. So, yeah. Next up is Tomoe River, which generally brings out shading quite a bit, and uh, here it most certainly did, but I think you'll be able to tell. I mean, if this paper had any lines or dots or whatever, you would be able to see them because look at how thin and light this ink has gone. And remember, this is their darkest shade of ink in their line, so yeah. Uh, there is a great halo effect, which I generally enjoy, but once again, it's uh, it really just highlights how thin this ink is. The It does dry out dry times, this paper, so the fine took 10 seconds and the 1.1 took 17, but yeah, it it's... Mm. But, yeah. And again, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no sheen. I said there's not even any echo because the ink is so light, but I don't know, maybe in the scrubby... Okay, bear in mind, there's a very powerful lamp pointed right at this, so... Yeah, this ink loves to... or Sorry, this paper loves to let ink just wash away when you add more water, and it certainly did with the fine. Oh, my cat... Or sorry, my dog's growling at something outside my door. Ignore that. But for some reason, the stub remained a bit more. Do you see the the down lines and every other dot, so I don't know, that's interesting, but so for the next three tests I only use the fine except to write the name so here's the world's worst 20 pound copier paper now this paper tends to suck out all saturation from an ink and here it did but what it left behind is just sort of a very weak looking blue and actually kind of like a robin's egg color so the fact that this is supposed to be their you know royal blue is uh, I don't like them trying to use that name but yeah uh, one and a half seconds to dry there's a great deal of spread if we if we look at the line width here versus here. I mean, it's a, it's a huge difference. And there's feathering. I'm going to try and bring it close so you can get a look. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's very wooly. It's not attractive. It's just not great. And, uh, for such a dry writing fine nib, I don't know if the camera will even pick this up because of the way it's freaking out over this shade of blue. But yeah, it actually bled through in many, many spots, and there's a lot of show through. And considering this is generally a dry writing fine, yet that is not something you want to see. Oh, eh, that's kind of better. Yeah, so the water test actually turned into like a chromatography test. You can see sort of like that purplishness at the center and the blue sort of spreading off of it. So, yeah, I mean, some remained, but this ink is so light anyway that even though less of it can wash out because absorbent paper sort of sucks the ink in and makes it hard to wash out even just a little makes it too light to read, so. Next up is Mead Notebook Paper, where it took two and a half seconds to dry, which I have no explanation for. And even here, it did that thing where, you know, when you start out, it gets kind of dark and then it has to get lighter. Now, there is a wooly texture, but you don't really get feathering. And you, you don't really get shading, 
but uh, there is a little bit of spread, but it's not quite as bad. Mm, God, what is my camera doing? My camera hates blue for some reason. But anyways, uh, there's a good bit of show through, but not a lot of bleed through. There are some places where it nearly comes through. Okay, that's the 1.1, and that is the marker I used to, yeah, just ignore that. But yeah, so actually it did, it did okay-ish on here, but I think it was the dry writing fine that really allowed it to behave so well. Now this paper hates ink, or it hates water, so I mean, I wish I could express the way it changes texture, because <laughs> it's a really weird feeling. But yeah, so it it could not resist the water, even though it's pretty absorbent and generally makes it harder to wash out. It just exploded and made a mess, and you could not recover that. The ink was too light anyway. Now lastly is moleskin paper, where, I mean, this paper hates ink, and it hates water, so ink plus water is just an utter disaster. I mean, look at that. You can see what to... And then everything else is just kind of gone. But yeah, um, for some reason, this ink generally allows, or this paper allows to retain a little bit of shading, which you see, you can see it's darker than it is here, and like that's lighter than that, and la la. But it really takes on this hideous wooly texture, and it feathers, and okay, this is the 1.1 stub, but it's just sort of easier to show the feathering on here, because this ink is so light and the feathers are, are slightly smaller on the fine nib, so it's going to be hard to get it on camera, but it feathers, it's unattractive, it's... And the interesting thing is there's there's almost some bleed, but just a few spots. Usually this paper is like the first to bleed, but uh, yeah, again, I think the dry writing fine nib is kind of the key to that. So this, this ink does not play well with this paper, just be forewarned. Yeah, and five seconds to dry. I can't explain that. But, uh, yeah, so there you go. There's Toucan's Royal Blue. Sorry for my camera doing the high highlighter neon glowing thing. Uh, I'll try and fix that in post. But, yeah, uh, not off to the best start with Toucan, but uh, I've heard good things about the other colors. This one wasn't for me. Uh, the color is very unique though, so if you like this color, definitely check it out. So yeah, uh, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. Bye.